I Lisa guess. takes this one and just kind of fields it and makes it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, score! Go Suns! How is oh, that series going? Not going, don't ask. Oh, so anyway, okay. so we, we still have a chance. <laughs> Arizona, if you're into basketball, still has a chance. We'll see. Fingers crossed. So talking about gardening for those folks that sure. aren't tracking sports what's uh what's the sport <laughs> of of gardening doing well i i want to talk about using containers specifically ceramic containers oh, sure. nice ceramic containers out in your yard and how you can use them on your decks your patios your landscape what's the best way to use them how to use them and i have 10 points we'll see if we can get through three of them you got 60 seconds of points. <laughs> the whole 10 minutes is yours. Yeah, I know how that goes. Anyways, containers. So container gardening, using the ceramic containers. So, uh, and, and I will say, we have some beautiful, beautiful ceramic containers, and they can add so much to anybody's yard. Um, and yeah, we believe we don't sell the plastic. We don't sell the wood. We sell what we know holds up really well in our climate. Yeah, and not just do. any clay. I mean, it's right. it's high fired, high. It's truly ceramic, mm -hmm. high glazed uh, uh, types of containers. Right, and they're beautiful. Are they cheap? No, they're, they're of not. great value. <laughs> they are. If you're gonna hold on to them for like ten years. Right. I mean, we've had some of our containers fifteen, than, yeah, decades going on more. Yeah. So they really do hold up well, and they can take be moved around the yard, and yeah. they can take the heat and the wind and the sun. So it's worth it. To invest a little bit of money in those containers. They're like pieces of art. When you get a nice container glazed pot with mm -hmm. a decorative style, they're stunning. They I know are. even without a plant in them, just put them out there. We've got some uh, some urns and some vases and stuff that mm -hmm. you know they're 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 outdoor type of decor, but right. we don't plant in them. Right, right. So I have ten. We'll see how many we can get through. So first, you can use containers to help soften those decks in patios and help bring the yard and the deck and the patio together. Sometimes we have a very much a delineation between the hardscape, the deck or yeah. the patio, and then the rest of the yard. So you can use nice containers with beautiful flowers and shrubs in them to help kind of blend the two together, yeah. help soften those hardscapes. In nature, sharp angles, 90 degrees parallels are not natural. Right. And so you put a pot in that corner of the deck, it just softens it right up and it feels more natural, just like that. It mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't take much. And you can also use them as a screen. So if you have a really nice deck, but part of your deck, maybe look, your neighbor has a window yeah. right onto it, you can put some nice big pots there and that will kind of help screen those neighbors from being able to look at you or you look at them. Privacy makes for good neighbors. It does. <laughs> I think that was Benjamin Franklin or someone. Sounds like him. <laughs> You can also use uh, containers to help with steps. So say you have stairways up to your house or out the back or off the side. Using containers on that stairway can help soften it. Um, it also helps make you aware that there are steps. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of times you, especially as we get older, I've noticed, it's really easy, especially if you're distracted by other things, you just miss the steps. So using containers on that can really help you say, oh, wait, there may be steps there. Uh, if you're doing that, you want to keep the pots, I think it looks better to keep them the same color. Um, doesn't have to be the same size, same everything, but keep them the same color. So you got some continuity um, and then maybe keep your flowers in the same color scheme. Not that every pot has to be an identical twin of the other, but you want that flow to go through. Nothing but roses in an aqua colored pot all the way down the steps. There you go. And there's 10 steps. I know where you get 10 <laughs> aqua colored pots. Oh my God. Maybe every other step or every third step or there something. I have to do every step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can use uh, containers to exert. <laughs> you can use containers to help accessorize those outdoor rooms. So it's become very popular to have the outdoor rooms where you yeah. have your barbecue and your seating and fans and TVs and all kinds Built of stuff kitchens. outside. Right. Yeah. So you can use those, the coloring, to help accessorize the room. So if you have a Victorian or a Southwest or Mountain Town, I mean, you can, you can bring in the colors and the shapes of the pots you want to accessorize that. Um, and you can also, what I kind of like about it is you can change them out seasonally. Yeah, so maybe you're enjoying fall. So you bring some pumpkins and pansies in and it's winter. So you put some holly and things out there. So you can change it out seasonally as well. 
makes it much more inviting in those outdoor rooms. Uh, you can use them to place along a path or to use as a boundary. And I, I thought of our house, so we have a raised patio, but we don't have a railing on it. Yeah. And we do have dogs and grandchildren <laughs> and people that visit. It's a negative edge to like right. six foot drop. So we've put containers along that edge just to kind of say, hey, whoa, there, there's, there's a big drop off. <laughs> Don't go any further. But if you want to uh, soften party or keep part of your yard from people going into or maybe your garden area is there, so you're trying to keep pets and that kind of thing out of, you can also use them as a boundary. When you're doing that, the thing to think of is, is to keep them taller. So you probably want pots that are at least two feet tall because if they're only a foot tall, yeah. that's not much of a boundary. And they can blow off, they can blow <laughs> over just if you need right. bigger plants, you want bigger mm -hmm. roots, so bigger spot right. to keep them from blowing over. Yeah. And it's not a tripping hazard because yeah. usually you see them. Uh, you know, you also want to keep, if you have a pathway through your backyard, you can use them for that too. So I'm sensing we need a new color for 2022. Safety yellow. Safety yellow. <laughs> Maybe an oxblood red would do just as well. I'm telling you, as I get older, those brighter colors, I'm like, boy, yeah, I need those. White is trending big. That's a great I one for a night white. for a night garden. So yeah. Those are perfect. I would have never thought I would like white pots, but especially inside our house, we have brought more and more white pots in. Very, very pretty. Curb appeal. So the front of your house, um, just to kind of help bring continuity. I love it where people paint their front doors. I'm a big, I love red front doors. Never had one, but I like the concept. But how pretty would that be to have some red pots out there right by that that front door? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it helps say, wow, you know, it's very welcoming. It's very much uh, wants people to come in. Maybe some people don't want that. <laughs> it says someone lives here with style. Right. Come on in and look, our, our home is so alive. Mm -hmm. The containers are just bursting with life. Uh, feel free to ring the doorbell. Yeah. Pretty and it's mean, also place the Amazon package right, right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're doing pots like that on a, on a front entryway, you do want to keep them in kind of odd numbers. So threes and maybe you're, you're varying the height. Yeah. Um, it's very good to have one that is more at site level and then a couple of others just to kind of break up the monotony. You don't want just plain boring. You want wow and exciting. I don't know. You got an Adobe type of house, maybe the mochas, the chocolates, the earth tones, the, the, the mm -hmm. jade greens yeah. blend right in with that. So boring, a variation of boring can be, well, I'm saying just vary the textures. heights and that gotcha. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, also when you're planting near your front door, kind of things to keep in mind, don't put cactus in oh, there. Yeah. Don't put Agave. maybe pyrocampa. <laughs> <Spears. laughs> yeah. Keep it soft. And also maybe consider doing those evergreen plants that aren't going to be shedding a lot of leaves. Um, much easier to maintain and keep looking neat and tidy. You can always put some splashes of color in by uh, using your annual colors and petunias, geraniums, that kind of thing. But let, let your main thing in that pot just kind of be evergreen. So the number one seller for all containers, without doubt, we sell hundreds if not more every year is Alberta spruce. Mm. It's a cute little just slow growing, perfectly formed Christmas mm -hmm. tree looking evergreen right. conifer. It's got mm -hmm. a needle to it. It just is so tidy and it 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 likes small spaces. It doesn't mm -hmm. over, doesn't grow very fast, so easy to maintain. That's a great yeah. choice. Another one would be like the Gulf Stream Nandina sure. that stay kind of that three by three. Yeah. Don't really shed a lot, but they get a lot of color in the leaves as well. Sorry. Did so, we get all 10 of them in? No. Because you're out of time. So sorry. Oh. You just got to, you have to come talk to Lisa about the other, what is that? Two, three? <laughs> we'll come back next week. Part two. So, <laughs> part two. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the mountain gardeners and how to use containers, decorative ceramics in your landscapes. We'll be right back after this.